So to get the overall force on this triangular plate, what we're going to do is find the force acting on a thin rectangular strip located within that plate. Once we have the force on that thin rectangular strip, we can integrate to get the entire hydrostatic force on the overall triangular plate. So really you wanna make it your goal right now to get the force acting on a thin rectangular strip. And we have labeled the width of that thin rectangular strip as W sub I. And then this dimension right here, because it's a very thin strip, we're just going to call that delta X. Now to get the force on that thin rectangular strip, we have to multiply the pressure by the area. So let's talk about the pressure first. So pressure we probably have picked up in this chapter is the density of the fluid multiplied by G and then multiplied by the depth at which the object is within the fluid. Now, if we look at our picture, we've drawn a vertical axis on the side. The surface of the water is located at a depth of zero, of course, and our thin rectangular strip is located at a depth that we have called X sub I star. That's just some fancy notation to indicate one of the many rectangular strips that we could have drawn. So the depth of our rectangular strip is just this vertical distance right here. So it's that X I star. So what we'll do is replace the depth in our equation, this D right here, with that X I and then the little star on it. Now we need the expression for the area of that thin rectangular strip. Now we all know that the area of a rectangle is just the, the length of the rectangle multiplied by its width. So here we could write that out as W sub I and then times delta X. One of the tricks right now is to figure out an expression for that width of this thin rectangular strip. So that's what we're going to do. And to do that, we're gonna to need to examine some similar right triangles, or excuse me, some similar triangles. They're not right triangles. Now, for example, we have a triangle right here, and it might be useful for us to just redraw that on the side. That is W sub I right there. And then we have the overall equilateral triangle right here. So we'll just sort of draw that next to our other triangle. We know that the overall equilateral triangle has a dimension here of two meters. And so what we're gonna do is try to set up a proportion. Now to do that, we're going to want to figure out the height, if you will, of the equilateral triangle. That shouldn't be too bad because of Pythagorean theorem's usefulness here. So this is two, this length right here would be one. And then if we just sort of call this H for now, we can do a quick Pythagorean theorem to get the height of that equilateral triangle. So it would be H squared plus one squared equals two squared. You can easily solve this and you would get radical three. So that dimension, that height of the equilateral triangle is indeed radical three. And then this dimension right here, we're gonna to wanna to come up with an expression for, because it kind of corresponds to the height of the other equilateral triangle. If we look back at our vertical scale that we had drawn on the side, on the right-hand side here, we can see that the height we seek is this dimension, which kind of corresponds to this dimension right here. Now, we just figured out that from here to here, was radical three, because that was the overall height of the equilateral triangle. We know from here to here is a distance of xi star. So that means that this dimension right here would be radical three minus the xi star. So we'll come over here and label that accordingly. This is gonna be radical three minus x sub i, and then with a star on it. Sorry, that's a little small. And now we can set up a proportion between the two triangles. We can say that W sub I over radical three minus X I with the star on it would be equal to this dimension here, which is just two over this dimension here, which is just radical three. And then what we'll do is try to solve this for W sub I. So let's cross multiply. You'll have radical three times W sub I is equal to two multiplied by radical three minus x sub i star. We can go ahead and maybe distribute that two. So we'll have two radical three minus two x sub i star, and then just divide each term by radical three here. 
And now we can see that W sub I, the width of our thin rectangular strip, is the following. These will cancel out, so you'll just have 2 minus 2 th over radical 3 times Xi star. So that's the expression that we want. We go back to our force equation. Remember, this was the force acting on that one thin rectangular strip. We'll come down here and paste it back in. And so for Wi, we're going to substitute in this expression right here. So now we are getting somewhere. We have the force on our thin rectangular strip is equal to the density of the fluid times g times x sub i star multiplied by this expression we just developed for the width of our thin rectangular strip and then times delta x. Okay, so we've done it. We've come up with a neat expression in terms of x that gives us the force acting on that thin rectangular strip. To get the overall force now, the secret of calculus tells us to integrate across the entire vertical dimension of our equilateral triangle. So if we go back to our scale here, maybe clean this up a little bit. If we're going to integrate across the entire vertical length of our equilateral triangle, then we would have to integrate from zero out to radical three. That would account for every single one of the infinite vertical strips that lie along that axis of our equilateral triangle. So in other words, to get the total force, we are now prepared to integrate from zero to radical three. And then you're gonna just simply change these little xi's to x's and the delta x becomes dx. So you have rho g x multiplied by two minus two over radical three x and then, like I said, the delta x becomes a dx. So now we can start to integrate. Perhaps we can factor out the rho g, just to make our integration a little easier. And while we're at it, let's distribute the x. So we'll have 2x minus 2 over radical 3x squared. And again, integrating from 0 to radical 3. This integration is easy. They're just little power rules, basically. So you're going to add 1 to this exponent. It becomes 2x to the 2 over the new exponent of 2. So in fact, these 2s will cancel out. And then same idea here. Add 1. So you'll have 2x to the 3rd. And then put it over the new exponent of 3. And then don't forget you have a radical 3 down there already. And then we're going to do this from 0 to radical 3. So now we have rho times g. We'll plug in the upper bound first. So you're going to have radical 3 squared minus 2 times radical 3 cubed over 3 radical 3. The lower bound is 0. So when you plug in the lower bound, you're going to be plugging it in here and here. But those are both going to 0 out. So you'll basically just have minus 0 here, which is nice. We can clean this up a little further. We have rho g. Of course, radical 3 squared is just 3. Now over here, you have 2. Now radical 3 is being cubed, so you have radical 3 times radical 3 times radical 3, if you want to think of it that way, over 3 radical 3. That radical 3 and that radical 3 cancel. Radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9, which is 3, which will cancel with the 3 on the bottom. So you're actually just left with a 2 there. Well, this is getting nice, because 3 minus 2 is just 1. So your force acting on this triangular plate is just the... It's just the uh, rho times g. So now all we have to do is fill in the values. We know the density of water is 1,000. And we know g, they told us, was 9.8. So if we multiply that out, we're going to get 9,800. And then the unit of force is newtons. So this would be the correct answer to the question.